Bodex company Trading Machines also made money with its ultra-fast trading. If it was really an equal match and I had lost fair, square, fair and square, I would have beaten myself up, I would have nursed my wounds, I would have actually been quite humble about things. I knew through my own self-criticism what I had screwed up and what I hadn't. Heim Bodex HFT company Trading Machines closes down for good in January 2011. I'd heard of Trading Machines, um, but I didn't know anything about Heim, so I thought, okay, you know, I might as well uh, meet him. So we set up a meeting uh, soon after. This was a few months after Trading Machines had basically shut down. It was no coincidence that Bodek started talking to Scott Patterson, a journalist for the Wall Street Journal. Patterson has followed high-frequency trading closely for years. Without knowing about each other, Bodek and Patterson had both been looking into the conflict of interest between the HFT industry and the exchanges for some time. We, we did meet at Starbucks in Midtown Manhattan, and I remember distinctly at one point near the end of our conversation, uh, Haim said something about uh, there being something in the market that's rigged. And he thought that it was in part responsible for what happened to trading machines. But I, I uh, actually had a full organizational chart with every single headcount, one of the top HFTs in my bag, and other you know, things that were um, part of my business intelligence. <laughs> and he had done a lot of work on it. But it was very vague. So you gave him this file of documents? Well, um, I let him look over my shoulder. I said, you have to tell me what this is. Because so many times in my career, I've talked to people who have said they know about something that's you know, potentially illegal or something rigged somewhere or another. But it's just, it, I never really get them to go beyond just to something that's really vague. And I remember the first real interview that I had with him at his house, and we sat down, I think it was around 10.30 in the morning, and proceeded to talk for seven hours straight and didn't eat anything. I think I had a glass of water. And, you know, I just sat back and listened to Haim and took notes uh, for so long that my computer ran out of power and I had to start taking notes by hand because it just, it all came out. I'm gonna try to explain metaphorically uh, what, I'm gonna, it's really a circus. Uh, so I'm gonna make it a little bit of a comedy here about what happens, but Sadly, this is pretty much the case. We're gonna have um, a concert hall. Let's say it's Metallica. I mean, I'm, I'm, I like metal music, so Metallica playing at this concert hall. The ticket counter opens at 6 p.m., so I'm gonna go and stand in line. But after a while, other people come in after me, and I'm no longer at the end of the line. There are these scalpers, well, they're in line with me also, okay? I can see them because they're, they're all wearing the same T-shirt. They also have a very, very close relationship with the exchange, you know, with the venue. And what is that relationship? Um, maybe one of them has, brings a significant amount, of, you know, of volume to this. And what does that mean? He buys a lot of tickets. Of course, he sells those tickets to customers here, but you know, one guy brings a lot of volume. Another guy, one of these scalpers, actually owns 10% of the venue, okay? Um, a third guy, he doesn't have a lot of volume. He's you know, not uh, big on this venue, but he's big on another venue. And he's got a board seat on this, uh, on this, on, in this venue. So there's a very, very close relationship between these scalpers and the venue. Scalping Metallica tickets. 
when the ticket counter opens, uh, I'm going to uh, equate that to a the moment when uh, in the stock market a price can change. And 6 p.m. on the dot, this is what I'm gonna witness. Every single one of these guys is literally going to immediately in one picosecond, they teleport, okay? They are all here ahead of me. How did that happen? I asked some of the other people and they say, oh, they're really fast. I'm like, no, they, they teleport. That guy was behind me. How, did, how does he get ahead of me? There really isn't any difference between an order type and being the guy who wears the t-shirt. You just put a little code on your order and you just say, hey, don't treat me badly, please. How did you get in contact with Heimbode? I met him at Blair Hall's house. He invited me over to have dinner, and that's how that's when I first met him. So what do you think of him as a person? He's great. He's another, he knows, he understands code, and so we were talking shop within five minutes. When he told you his story, was it something that you also already had noticed in the data feeds that you were getting in? No. There's no way, we don't know who executes on a quote unless we don't know who's behind each one, whereas he would know who's behind his, for example. And he knows on what exchanges. He would see what, what, well, I should have been the one in the first, I should have been the next one to be filled, but he wasn't. And there's no way to see that. No, once I was told it was so easy to figure out the rest and fill in all the holes, but if you don't actually know that there are scalpers out there who are gonna use special order types to queue jump you and then they're gonna buy all the tickets and then they're gonna sell them back to the guys in the line. If you don't know that that is a significant amount of the trading that occurs on an exchange and if you don't know the mechanisms by which it occurs, it's, uh, you know, you, you believe what you see on the price feed. So who set this up? It's not a business guy who designed these features. Only a few people out there who have the, really have the technical competency to design these features. Le, you know, less than 10. 10? Less than 10, way less. And you know them all? Uh, not, not personally. Uh, well, I know many of them personally. I don't know all of them personally. Um, I'm very familiar with their work.